So before we begin our lesson on quadratic on the quadratic formula, I want you guys to do one completing the square warm up. We will be using this a tiny bit today, so I just want to make sure that we are all clear on how to complete the square. If you haven't done so already or done this problem yet, pause the video and try it on your own. Should be pretty simple. Okay, so I am hoping that you all have tried this on your own at this point. Um, completing the square, step number one, we wanted to move our constant to the other side. So we subtract 4 from both sides. I'm going to leave this gap right here because um, that's where we're going to put our complete the square. Then we make sure that the coefficient in front of x squared is equal to 1, which in this case it is, so we're okay. Step number three, we're going to take our coefficient of x, or our b, and we are going to half it to get 6, square it to get 36, and then we're going to add 36 to both sides. Next, we are going to factor. So thinking of two numbers that add to equal 12 and multiply to equal 36 would be a positive 6 and a positive 6. Um, so we can either write that as x plus 6 times x plus 6, but we would rather write this as x plus 6 squared. And then simplifying the right side, negative 4 plus 36 is 32. The shortcut to that last step with the um, parentheses squared is whatever number you got from having b, this will always be the number that goes inside here. Um, okay, then our next step, we're trying to solve for x, so we're going to square root both sides to get rid of that squared. So we have x plus 6 equals the square root of 32. Uh, we need that plus or minus because we square rooted both sides. Breaking apart 32, I know that's 16 and 2. 16 is 8 and 2, and 8 is 4 and 2, and 4 is 2 and 2. So I have a pair of 2s, another pair of 2s, and that's it. So we'll have 2 times 2 is 4, and that's for my two pairs of 2s on the inside. And I have this leftover 2, so we'll have square root of 2. You could have seen in the very first step at 16, the square root of 16 is 4, and then we would have a 2 left over. If you didn't recognize that and you kept going, you'll get the same answer either way. And last but not least, we want to move this 6 to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. So we'll have x equals a negative 6 plus or minus 4 root 2. We don't like to list anything on the other side of this radical because then it might look like this radical should have been extended when it's not. So we like to list those in front. And that plus or minus needs to stick with the 4 root 2, so don't accidentally put it on the 6. And that is our final answer. Okay, moving into the quadratic formula, we're in section 4, topics 8 and 9. Um, so far, we've talked about three different ways to solve quadratic equations. So finding square roots, so that's where you square root both sides. So you have something squared equals some number, so you square root both sides. Factoring is where you break it apart into trinomials, and you have like x plus some number and x minus some number. Completing the square is the half it, square it, add it. which then leads you here to solving by square roots. Um, today we're going to learn a fourth method called the quadratic formula. You may have seen this before. Um, you should have definitely seen it before. It's a formula, so there's really only one way that you can explain it because it's just plugging in numbers. Um, but I will go through and show you how I personally do it. Before we get there, though, we're going to talk about how we get the quadratic formula. This would not be a question on a test. I just want you guys to be aware that these formulas don't just come out of thin air. Um, it's from people generalizing the rules that we've created. Um, so we're actually going to complete the square off of our standard form of a quadratic. So completing the square actually led us to the quadratic formula. They just 
like broadened it so that no matter what your a b and c are you know what numbers to plug in so taking our ax squared plus bx plus c standard form we're going to subtract c from both sides so it's moving that constant to the other side of the equal sign and they left that gap next we want to divide everything by a because we want the coefficient in front of x squared to be one so now these would cancel and we would be left with x squared plus b over a x equals a negative c over a next we're going to complete the square so you know how we said we take the coefficient of x and we half it so b times one is b a times two is two a then we square it so we have b over two a to the power of two is b squared over four a squared and we fill in the blanks with that value so it looks super complicated but it's technically just completing the square next we want to um, simplify the right side so we needed to make it have a common denominator this the left fraction only has an a the right fraction has a 4 and a squared so we took negative c over a and we multiplied it by 4a over 4a that way we would have a negative 4ac all over 4a squared so that's how they got that right there this second fraction just remained the same then now that we have a common denominator we can add across so negative 4ac plus b squared um, they just put it in a different order so b squared minus 4ac then they wrote well, let's get rid of all this they wrote that fraction as a perfect square binomial so we had said whatever number we get from having b which on the last page we saw from having b we got this b over 2a so we have a positive b over 2a in our fraction or are in our parentheses and then it's all raised to the power of 2 the right side is just our simplified um, fraction that we just did here then we have a common denominator so they just put those two together to create b squared minus 4ac they square rooted both sides to make the square root and the squared cancel they realized that the square root of 4a squared is equal to 2a so they square root of the top square root of the bottom the square root of the top it could not be simplified but they remember the plus or minus again on the left side the square root and the squared cancel and their last step is to move b over 2a to the other side so they subtract it from both sides and they write it as one whole fraction so we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and we were able to do this because we had common denominators already so that is how you create or derive the quadratic formula that is not something that you are going to be responsible to do on your own um, but that is where all the terms come from so you will definitely want to have this memorized um, I'm sure after using it a few times you will likely have it memorized just kind of naturally okay to solve wow, to solve quadratic equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero we can use the quadratic formula which we just derived um, and this is read as x equals the opposite of b so a lot of people say the negative b but this is really meaning that you just need to flip the sign of b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a make sure that whenever you're using the quadratic formula that your equation is equal to zero if it is not equal to zero you need to rearrange it if not you will get it wrong and it would be a shame to just be plugging into a formula and get it wrong because you didn't have the very first step correct so make sure all your equations are equal to zero before beginning your quadratic formula and now to the practice problems okay so number one we have 5x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals zero 
This is in our standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. We do not include the X squareds when I'm looking at A, B, and C. It's just the coefficients. So A is equal to five, B is equal to negative two, and C is equal to one, sorry, negative one. So keep the signs with your A, B, and C. And then we plug into the formula. So x is equal to the opposite of b. So we currently have a negative 2. So the opposite of negative 2 would be a positive 2. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. So b squared, negative 2 squared, is a positive 4. So, so far we have done, let's write this off to the side. Okay, so I'm going to show my thought process up here, but I would not write this down. It's kind of a wasted step just to write everything down. Okay, so we just did b squared. Now we're on the minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which is negative 1. This is all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 5. Okay, so back to our simplified. So our next step in the radical is this negative 4 times negative, sorry, negative 4 times 5 times negative 1. Negative 4 times 5 is a negative 20. And negative 20 times a negative 1 is a positive 20. Then in our denominator, we have 2 times 5, which would be 10. So I would do a lot of this in my head and then just write down this first step. Don't try to hold everything in your head at once. It's going to be too much. Um, so just at least at this point, it looks a lot simpler. There's a lot less numbers and symbols there um, for you to simplify. When we are uh, simplifying the quadratic formula, we always simplify inside the radical first. So 4 plus 20 is 24. Then we need to simplify this radical. So 24 can be broken into 12 and 2, 12 can be 6 and 2, 6 is 3 and 2, and that's as far as we can go. So we have a pair of 2's that can come out, so we still have the 2 plus or minus. A pair of 2's comes out and we're left with 2 times 3 inside, so we would just multiply those together to get a 6. Then our last step is to simplify. I'm looking to see if I can reduce anything, and by anything I mean anything outside the radical, all by something. I see that all of these can be reduced by two, so two divided by two is one, plus or minus one root six. You don't have to write the, root, the one in front of that though. So to say plus or minus root six, and 10 divided by two is five. Let's make this look a little bit nicer. So we would say 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 5 would be your final answer.